Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video I'd like to share with you a lesson that's taken directly from the course Subjects with Pen and Ink. In this course, Subjects with Pen and Ink, we take a look at drawing a variety of different subjects using a variety of different pen and ink techniques and materials including nib pens, dip pens, and ink wash. And in this video, we're going to talk about using ink wash. Now ink wash is the process of applying ink to the surface, but you can thin the ink by adding water to it to create a variety of different values. And in this lesson, we're going to draw a couple of cherries using the approach of ink wash. Now, if you want to learn more about how you can access this course, which is only for members at thevirtualinstructor.com, I'll leave a link below this video. You can go check it out for yourself. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at how to create an image of some cherries using ink wash. In this lesson, we'll use India ink and nylon brushes, and we'll use the technique ink wash to create this image of a couple of cherries. We'll start here with an H graphite pencil sketching out the overall shape of both of the cherries. Now we're working on watercolor paper for this image. And specifically, I'm using a 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. Now of course you can use 140 pound cold press watercolor paper as well. The difference is in the texture. The hot press watercolor paper is much smoother compared to cold press watercolor paper. Now, of course, you can apply ink wash to any surface that you wish, but when you use a watercolor paper, it's going to minimize the buckling that happens when we start applying the ink wash to the surface. This is important to keep in mind. Of course, we want to minimize the buckling as much as possible. So as you can see here, we're starting just as we have with the other drawings in this series with a very loose approach. This is a fairly simple object here, clearly. It's basically just a couple of irregular spheres and a couple of stems here, but we're still drawing loosely to make sure that we find the correct lines. We're not too concerned about defining the contour lines at this point. And once we've got the overall general shape in place, then we can go in and refine the contour lines, making the outer shape of the, the cherries, each one of the cherries, and of course the stem as well, a little bit more clearly defined. Now, of course, we're using an H graphite pencil, which is a little bit harder, so we want to make sure that we don't put too much pressure on the pencil to create indentations in the surface of the paper. This paper is 100% cotton, so it's a little bit softer. Now, at this point, I've gone ahead and outlined all of the areas where I see contrast in value, where I see a light value right next to a dark value. All right, let's go ahead and get some ink on the palette, and I'm just going to use India ink, and I'm looking to use the Carbon Black India ink. So if you look on the label of your ink, if you see Carbon Black, you know that you're going to be using the darkest ink available. I'm going to add quite a bit of water to the ink here. We want to thin it out to a very light gray, and it might be helpful to use a test strip of paper before you go to your final surface. But if you do put down color that's too dark, you can always dab it up with a paper towel, so it's important to have a paper towel handy as well. Now, the process of ink wash is very, very similar to the process of watercolor painting. We're going to start with light applications and progressively layer darker applications over the top. So this is a slow and patient process. Since this approach is similar to painting with watercolor, some of the same techniques that we use with watercolor painting can be applied to ink wash. For example, we can apply ink to areas that are already wet. So in, in other words, if the surface is already wet and we apply ink to the surface, the ink's going to bleed in a similar way that we see with watercolor. We can also apply layers of translucent ink over the top of areas that have dried completely and slightly darken the value. And this is the approach that we're taking here. So we're starting with a very light application. Of course, you can see that we're working around all of the shapes that have been planned out for highlights. And then once this initial application has dried, we're going to start layering progressively darker applications over the top. It's important that we don't rush this process. It's always easier to make an area a little bit darker if we need to 
than to make it lighter if we accidentally make it too dark. In fact, it's nearly impossible with ink wash. With watercolor paint, we can apply water to the surface even after an area has dried completely and lift up some of the color. We don't have this advantage with ink wash. Once the ink is dried, it is there. So we need to be very careful and delicate here, especially in the beginning stages. We'll go ahead and lay a little bit of cast shadow underneath each one of these cherries. And if you look at the reference, you'll see that this shadow is connected as well. So we'll go ahead and connect these two shadows together with a little bit of water and just a touch of ink. Then of course, after our initial application has dried, we're gonna switch over to a smaller brush here and start getting a little bit darker with our applications. Now, the first brush I used was a number four round brush, and this is Grumbacher's Golden Edge Nylon Brush Series. These are the same brushes that I use for watercolor painting. Now, of course, the ink will stain the, the brush itself, so it's important to have some water handy, of course, and keep your brush nice and clean throughout the process. The brush I'm using here, of course, is smaller, as I mentioned before. This is actually a double zero brush. Now, it's important to note, since I'm telling you the sizes of the brushes, that the numbers that are used to designate the size of the brush will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So a double zero in Grumbacher might be a slightly different size than a double zero that you'll find in another manufacturer. We'll add a bit of shadow here and there on both of the stems and at the top of the stem, of course, and a few areas where we see some of those darker shapes and imperfections. We'll go ahead and work down to the bottom of the base, and here you can see that some of the shapes that I'm addressing right now are quite a bit darker on our subject than what I'm painting at this point. But again, it's the process of slowly and gradually getting darker with our layered applications that will ultimately lead to a more representational appearance. We'll go ahead and start darkening up some of the shadows that we see on the body of the cherries at this point. Again, sticking with our double zero round nylon brush. Now, of course, we're making an effort to mimic the shapes of value that we see in the reference. But here again, it's important to understand that we don't have to make an exact replica of the subject that we're working from. We're not trying to create a copy of the photo. We're trying to create our own unique image here. And of course, this will naturally happen during the process. But too many people get called up in trying to mimic or actually replicate a photograph. And they place too much emphasis on their success or they evaluate their success based on this. Don't fall into that trap. Remember that your viewer is not going to see your photo reference unless, of course, you show them. The true measure of a piece of artwork is if it can stand on its own and be appreciated by the viewer. Now you can see here at the bottom of the cherry, I've added a bit of darker value, but I'm using a bit of water to move this ink around in this particular area while it's still wet. Now, we'll also notice that these cherries are also quite reflective. We can see, of course, the light reflecting off of it in these two strong highlights on both of the cherries, but we can also see some reflection happening against the cherries themselves. So on the cherry on the left, we can see on the right side of it, we see an area of darker value. And then on the cherry on the right, we also see an area of darker value on the left side. And this is because this is a reflection of each one of the cherries. So we'll go ahead and start darkening up this area area right here on the right side of our first cherry. Again, taking care to leave open spaces where we see those strong highlights. And this is a concept to keep in mind whenever you're drawing or painting anything that's highly reflective. Now, of course, these cherries aren't highly reflective, but they are reflective to a certain degree. And whenever we see a reflective surface, we're typically going to see areas of high contrast between values. In other words, we'll see a dark value right next to a light value. And we can see this throughout both of these cherries. Now, another thing that you'll notice as we progress through this particular image is once the ink has been applied to the surface or once it's initially applied to the surface, it might appear slightly darker than what it appears 
when it is completely dry. Of course, this is something to keep in mind as you work, and just keep in mind that you might have to go back over areas that you've already addressed. When you initially addressed them, you might have felt like they were dark enough, but then once dry, you see that you need to make them darker. And of course, this is perfectly natural. This is something that also sometimes happens with watercolor painting as well. Now, even though we see a strong highlight on the left side of the cherry, we still see a, a slight edge here as well. So we'll go ahead and define that with a lighter gray. And then it's back to continuing the process of darkening up those darker shadows and reflections that we see on the cherry. Now you'll also notice that ink wash sometimes has a little bit of a splotchy appearance associated with it, and this is just the nature of ink wash. The ink dries incredibly fast, so it is more difficult to create gradations or slow changes from dark to light with this medium. Although during the layering process, you can see that we can hide some of the splotchiness quite a bit. So it's important to take a layered approach. We also see a bit of texture on the bottom portion of the cherry. So by layering those darker values, we can leave a few open spaces, allowing some of those middle values and lighter tones to show through. Then it's back to the stem now that the stem has had a ample time to dry to make some of those values a little bit darker. And then it's back to the body of the cherry again, making these values nice and dark, creating those reflections and areas of shadow. Now, value, of course, is relative. Value is the darkness or lightness of a color, of course, and by this point, you should be well acquainted with value. But the way that we understand value is all based on the values that are around that particular value. So in other words, we can make the highlights appear stronger by making the shadows around them stronger. And the reverse of this is true as well. If we were working with a lighter colored medium, we could add lighter tones and make the shadows feel stronger. So the more that we layer these applications and the darker our tone and value gets, the stronger our highlights get, the broader the range of value that we create and our contrast also increases. There is a slight reflected highlight on the bottom portion of the cherry, so we're leaving a slightly lighter area right at the bottom. We'll go ahead and give a hint of an outline on the right side of the cherry, preserving that area of highlight before moving on to our second cherry. Now we've had quite a bit of experience with our first cherry layering applications of the ink. So our second cherry is gonna go a little bit quicker. Again, we're gonna start in the area where we see the darkest value, preserving the highlights as we make our layered applications. And since we're a little bit more experienced at this point, we can be a little bit bolder with our initial applications, making them slightly darker than we did with our first cherry. But we're still going to, to hold back just a little bit and make sure that we don't make those values too dark too quickly. Now, of course, we've already discussed hatching and cross hatching. And when we did, we discussed the fact that our lines need to flow around the form of the subject. This is sometimes commonly referred to as cross contour lines. Now, when we're working with a brush, nothing changes. We still need to consider the form of the subject that we're working with. Now, in this case, we're dealing with a cherry. So we have a rounded spherical type shape. A, Clearly not a sphere, but it's spherical. This means that our directional strokes that we make with our brush should flow around the form of the subject as well. So you'll notice that I am thinking about these directional strokes. And for the most part, they're flowing vertically around the body of the cherry. And up near the top, they're gonna to curve slightly according to the curve of the cherry itself. So just because we're working with a brush doesn't mean that we need to abandon thinking about the form of the subject and the directional strokes that we make. This should also be considered. So you can see here I'm preserving the highlight at the top part of the cherry and also adding a slight bit of slightly darker value on the right side where we still see a highlight but it's not quite as strong as what we see at the top. We'll go ahead and start darkening up some of the elements that we see on this side of the stem. 
And then we'll darken up some of the elements on the left side of the stem too, or the left stem as well, since we can make comparisons between the values that we have applied to the right and the left, and we can unify both of the stems. And then, of course, it's back to the body of the cherry, making the values nice and dark, especially where we see that reflection on the left side. And then, of course, to harmonize with our first cherry, we'll do the same thing on it. On the right side, of course, where we see the reflection from the cherry on the right. Of course, we want to make sure that our values are consistent throughout the image. So even though we've completed the cherry on the left, for the most part, we'll revisit it again in a moment, we can still expect to go back to it to make changes. So clearly the process continues here as we just gradually make these values darker. And of course, with each layered application, we gradually cover up some of that splotchier appearance that we see of our initial ink applications underneath. Of course, we're paying attention to the photo reference throughout the process, taking note of the shapes of lighter value that we see and also the shapes of darker value and just concentrating on trying to replicate those shapes in our image. Here we'll add that darker edge here, but you can see that this is quite a bit too dark. So I've got my paper towel handy. I'll just dab it real quickly and there's the perfect value. We'll go ahead and make the area of cast shadow that's the darkest a little bit darker. We can see this smaller shape of darker value underneath each one of the cherries. And then of course we can de-intensify it a little bit or lessen the intensity quite a bit by adding some water and dabbing with the paper towel while of course the surface is still wet. Then just like we can with watercolor, we can go back and refine things a bit while the area is still wet. Then of course it's back to our first cherry making some of the values a little bit darker, especially down here at the bottom portion of the cherry. You can see how rich that initial application is, but with a little bit of water, we can move this application around and of course accentuate more of that texture that we see. Then of course, after our ink wash image has dried completely, we can use a kneaded eraser to erase away any remaining graphite lines. And now our image of a couple of cherries completed with ink wash is complete. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. Remember, if you want to learn more about this course, there's a link in the description below this video. And if you want to check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, you can do so as well. I'll leave another link in the description below this video as well. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting media here, as well as a broad variety of subjects as well. Thanks again for watching. And as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.